Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today I'm bringing you through the five or six rules I think you should be aware of before journeying into Frosthaven. I just spent the last, well, week or two reading through this rule book multiple times, trying my best to get as many of the rules ingrained into my head as possible, and also trying to break down and understand the differences between Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, and Frosthaven, the big brother now. And there's actually a lot of stuff that is very similar in terms of how the gameplay functions and the core mechanics, but there are some notable changes. Now, Frosthaven and Cephalofair team have done a really good job at breaking down and helping you understand what those changes are. Throughout the first part of this rulebook, they'll actually be outlined in blue text, which is going to let you diagnose and see the differences as you're starting to understand the core concept of the game. Now, of course, the settlement phase is going to be completely unique now. They've really revamped how you're actually interacting with the town and the community that you're playing with, so that whole section is supposed to be considered brand new. And this is a beefy rule book to dive into. We're talking about 64 pages of text laden, laden uh, rules to actually process and read. If you've played Gloomhaven before, one of the reasons why I'm making this video is to highlight some of the things that I personally think you should be paying attention to uh, and that you should note before journeying into your campaign, because you run the risk of falling into like the old hat or thinking that you know exactly how to play Frosthaven, which in reality, there are some things that will be mechanic and uh, balance issues if you don't adjust for them. So starting at number one, let's talk about the loot deck. The loot deck has changed in a variety of ways. Uh, this is going to be on page 16 of the rulebook. And some of the core ways that this has changed is this system relies on a crafting system quite heavily. So instead of just finding coins to go back to town to purchase items from the uh, merchant, from the local shop, you're actually going to be finding a lot of stuff out there in the ether, whether these are herbs to make potions with or raw materials like metal and leather to actually bring back and craft into the weapons and the items that you need. Now, this provides for a lot of cool utilization, a lot of cool ways to combine things together and unlocking different uh, uh, technology trees or blacksmith trees. However, it does limit your ability to just buy everything that you want right from the get-go. So a few things to note. First off, one of the changes between original Gloomhaven and Jaws of the Lion moving up here is that every creature that summons included will end up dropping a loot mark. That loot mark will then allow you to, if you pick it up or you, or you loot it, you'll be able to actually draw from a loot deck. That loot deck is going to be composed of raw ingredients, raw resources, coins, and then one, typically one rare item or one random item, which you can only ever collect once, even if you're replaying the scenario multiple times. So make note of that. But also, you should note that Gloomhaven and some of the loot items from Gloomhaven are transferable over here into the Frosthaven system. The problem is, is that they're not going to be easily or readily available. When you f first start out and you're purchasing the items that you actually want to get, you'll have a marketplace that you could buy from. But it's kind of viewed as if you're coming out of town and bringing these items with you. So be careful. The 30 coins that you have or so to spend on the starting gear may be the only time you get to purchase for multiple hours into the beginning of this campaign. You don't actually have a shop to buy from uh, until you actually build a shop to buy from, which does take quite a bit of time. So when you're looking at this and you're looking at the marketplace and you're looking at the items that you could purchase, you're looking at transferring over some of your favorite gear, favorite items from Gloomhaven Core, uh, you're going to want to do that as early as possible because to start with and for the duration of your campaign, a lot of your focus is going actually to be on, on, on upgrading and building out the crafting system here in the core system uh, as opposed to just buying from a shop. Okay, so page 16, we'll break down the loot deck information. Let's talk about some of the new status effects or some of the adjusted status effects. You can find this on page 28 in the rulebook. It'll break them all down, but just so we can go over them, just so we can all remember them. There's been a large change to invisibility. Uh, no longer can you stand in a doorway and block line of sight or block pathways through, creating a confusion for every mob inside. Instead, they can just move right past you. Invisibility now makes you like an empty space. They cannot stop on top of you, but they can certainly move through you, and you can move through them. So keep that in mind if you get surrounded by a bunch of invisible enemies that you don't know how to hit. Now, there are a few different status effects as well. So regenerate 
uh, is going to be one of these status effects that has some changes to it. This allows you to heal at the start of your turn and it actually triggers before wound would trigger. So you can actually heal removing wound before wound causes you to, to wound, to bleed. Uh, ward. Ward is going to be kind of like a half shield. It's going to cause you to suffer half damage. It also would cancel something like a critical hit where you'd take two, time, two times damage. This is gonna make it so you only take the normal amount of damage. Uh, brittle is going to do the opposite. Brittle is as if you're taking a two times hit no matter what, it's going to be double damage. I mean, I imagine like you have like some frostbite happening or something and they strike right where a little bit of your arm or skin shatters and flakes off. Bane is just going to be 10 damage at the end of your turn. Uh, or just straight lose a card. Don't forget that mechanic that you could actually sub out and just eat a card instead of actually taking the damage. Uh, this is a big system here. Now, as far as I'm aware, it is not too big of the game, but it definitely is around and it definitely can happen. So keep that in mind. If you see that pop up on any status card or effect card, you might either want a heal prepared uh, or anything else. Now, this would be a risky or, or this would be a, a saving grace type of heal uh, because Bane does clear and Brittle does clear with a heal and uh, they're not like poison. Poison stops heal entirely. They, they will actually be able to be healed through. So you can actually get the points as well. And then finally, uh, Impair has some changes to it, but the short and, short and sweet of it is you get no items. Doesn't remove the item effects that you've already triggered or any of those abilities, but you can activate no items for the next turn. So that is page 28. That is the new status effects that you should be aware of. Make sure you give those a read over or a glance over and keep those in mind as you're playing. Page 32. Picking up items has a pretty substantial change uh, from the last two systems. If you find an item as you're exploring, which you happen to do, when you, especially when you have a game that has a rare item in every single loot deck, you can equip it immediately. Meaning if you're wearing two helmets, you can wear two helmets. If you're carrying two swords in a hand, you can carry two swords in a hand. It breaks your equipment rules until you get home. Then you have to reset back to standard practice, yes, normal fare. But this does mean that you could find some cool things and add them into your pile, add them into your ability deck to give you some cool actions or give you some unique combinations from scenario to scenario. Now, this is not one of those things you can strategize around, but it certainly can be a lot of fun to stumble in some abilities that normally wouldn't be able to be paired together and just hopefully clean through a few of these chapters or a few of these missions. So. Uh, picking up items, keep that in mind, you can equip it right away, unless it's a duplicate. If it's a duplicate, you must immediately sell or give it to a friend. This is one of the only ways that you can hand off items from yourself to another person. But again, if you're playing within a scenario, you find a duplicate that you already have, like a second heater shield, you can hand that off to your ally and they can equip it on top of whatever they have as well. So page 32 will break down picking up items. Page 58, we already went through this a little bit, but buying gear. Buying gear is not going to be something you can do towards the beginning of the game. So when you spend your initial coins, pick stuff that you think you're gonna to wanna to play with for an extended period of time. It does give you a rules breakdown and a general guide towards what gear you might wanna buy, uh, but I'd take time looking through your cards and reading through the potential gear to, to really hone in on your personal play style because every character has the way that they play and then every character has the way that you could play them or a few different pathways or a few different variables for how you might play them. Uh, so keep that in mind. To start with, it's gonna be a lot about crafting. It's gonna be a lot about uh, getting the resources that you need and it's not gonna be as focused on just purchasing some of the stuff that you were able to get from old school Gloomhaven right away. And then finally, just one of those things to keep in mind, as you journey into Frosthaven, uh, page 64, retirement, retirement, retirement. Retirement is a major part of this game and it's not something that I've actually explored too much yet, but you should keep it in the back of your mind that you want to retire characters. You don't just want to hold onto your character for the duration of your gameplay because it's going to make it a lot more difficult. When you retire characters, you get to upgrade your settlement. You get to open these packages, these envelopes, place new buildings down, and just learn more about this community that you're developing. And your characters add their skills to that community. So you kind of don't want to hold on to all of your characters, which is sad for me because when I start playing and I start leveling up and I start moving forward, there's part of me that just doesn't wanna let go of my really awesome character. 
But starting from the very beginning here, I'm keeping in mind that I kind of want to close that gap almost as soon as possible. So don't get too attached to the characters that you're playing. You will get to spend many, many, many chapters, many hours, many sessions with them, but eventually you want them to have an attainable retirement goal, something that could happen quickly and early on. So you can move on to a new combat system, you can move on to a new character, but you can also develop your settlement in a way that just Gloomhaven never really did. Uh, you should have a lot more characters to pick from as you play. Uh, hopefully you'll start unveiling those. I believe there's 11 additional characters uh, beyond the starting uh, ones that you stumble across. Um, but yeah, you're, you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to hold on to your characters for too long. Uh, so uh, in each one of your retirement goals will be paired with a objective building or objective location that you'll be able to construct there on the map. So that's some of the major rules. That's some of the major things that I think I'm keeping in mind as I venture into Frosthaven. Uh, some of the stuff that I think is helpful to continue going over because they're easy things that you might miss. Now, on the 15th, when the embargo lifts, we will have a full dedicated review up to the point where we are at. And on the uh, 17th, no, the 16th, the day after that, that Friday, we'll be releasing a past 2 a.m. Uh, episode one uh, of Frosthaven. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled. Subscribe to the channel. We're just diving into this game head first, and we're really excited about it. Uh, with that, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.